I often think of the question that Dr. King asked us all those years ago. I think it's important you all remember, but I think it's important the nation remember it. He said, where do we go from here? President Biden traveling to Atlanta today to speak at the church Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King helped lead. The president becoming the first sitting president to deliver a message at the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. The president reflecting on the life and legacy of the civil rights leader on what would have been Dr. King's 94th birthday. National correspondent Stephanie Sandoval live now with more on the president's visit leading up to tomorrow's holiday. Good evening, Stephanie. Julie, the president gave a speech at the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, making history himself. Take a listen. President Joe Biden delivered remarks from Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, making him the first sitting president to deliver a Sunday sermon from the historic church, where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. served as pastor. We have to choose a community over chaos. Are we the people who are gonna choose love over hate? These are the vital questions of our time and the reason why I'm here as your president. I believe Dr. King's life and legacy show us the way we should pay attention. He spoke about King's life and legacy, also noting he was one of his only political heroes. I often think of the question that Dr. King asked us all those years ago. I think it's important you all remember, but I think it's important the nation remember it. He said, where do we go from here? That's a quote. Where do we go from here? Well, my message to the nation on this day is we go forward. We go together. When we choose democracy over autocracy, a beloved community over chaos, when we choose believers in the dreams, to be doers, to be unafraid, always keeping the faith. The president was invited by the current pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock, who has been the senior pastor there since 2005. Martin Luther King was assassinated in 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee. The sermon came on what would have been King's 94th birthday. We pray for our city, we pray for our state, we pray for our nation, we pray for the world. For as Dr. King reminded us, we are tied in a single garment of destiny, caught up in an inescapable network of mutuality. Whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. This is just one of the many ways the nation is remembering the civil rights leader just ahead of Martin Luther King Jr. Day on Monday. In Boston, a massive bronze sculpture called The Embrace was unveiled, honoring King and his wife, Coretta. The artwork was inspired by a photo of the couple hugging after King received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. And tomorrow in Atlanta, the King Center, a nonprofit organization started by Martin Luther King Jr.'s wife, Coretta, uh, to preserve his legacy, is hosting a commemorative service in remembrance of him. Back to you, Julie. Stephanie Sandoval, live for us in Nashville tonight. Stephanie, thanks so much.